the International Space Station's Expedition 29 is the first long-duration spaceflight for most of the six men on the crew. Mike Fossum is a native of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, who grew up in the small town of McAllen, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley. We lived on the edge of town, and my brothers and friends and I would just get on our bikes and head out of town whenever we had the opportunity to, just to go explore, to go camping, to go hunting, to do uh, all those kind of things. And it was, for me, it was a big part of my childhood was to have the chance to get outdoors and, and do stuff on, on my own and also is hugely uh, active in the Boy Scouting program uh, down in the valley. After high school, Fossum went to Texas A&M University and joined the Corps of Cadets just so he could get a dorm room. But he ended up finding his calling and became a leader in the Corps while earning a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Fossum took his commission in the U.S. Air Force and after earning a Master's in Systems Engineering at the Air Force Institute of Technology, he was detailed to the Johnson Space Center in Houston to support space shuttle flight operations. After a few years, he took the advice of two fellow Air Force officers, astronauts Jerry Ross and Ellison Onizuka, who suggested he broaden his experience. Fossum was selected for the Air Force Test Pilot School, where he became a flight test engineer and served in several assignments before resigning from active duty and coming back to work for NASA in Houston. He worked as a systems engineer on several projects, including the prototype space station crew escape vehicle, the X-38, while earning a master's in physical science at the University of Houston Clear Lake, before being picked as an astronaut in 1998. Fossum completed three spacewalks on the second return to flight test mission in 2006, and three more on the 2008 shuttle flight that delivered the Kibo Laboratory to the International Space Station. Well, some things are worth taking the risk. There's a risk associated with it, and that's something that you have to face. But the, the kind of science that we give back in return is, is huge, and there's no other way to do this stuff, and that's why we do it. Russian Air Force Colonel Sergei Volkov was born in the Kharkov region of Ukraine and was inspired to become a pilot during the time his father was a flight instructor at a military school. When I was three years old, uh, he uh, took me to the uh, airfield uh, and uh, while he flew with cadets, his friends just uh, gave me a tour of the airfield and of course I was able to sit in the real fighter and that's uh, sort of how the dream, dream appeared actually. The family moved to Star City when Alexander Volkov became a cosmonaut. Young Sergei grew up with famous cosmonauts as neighbors, and when he saw how much time his father spent studying for exams while training for his three space flights, he decided there were more minuses than pluses to the cosmonaut's life. So after high school, he went to the Tambov Air Force Pilot School and graduated as a pilot engineer. He flew as an Air Force cargo pilot for two years, but when he felt he could do more for his country, Volkov applied to become a cosmonaut. He was selected as a candidate in 1997 and became the world's first second-generation space traveler in 2008 when he commanded the International Space Station's Expedition 17. We don't know what to expect when we reach the Mars surface. We don't know what, what we may expect from flying beyond the solar system. But we always wanted to know this, and this, I think, is inspiring us, and that's, we still continue to fly, and uh, even it's really risky, risky. Dr. Satoshi Furukawa was born and raised in Yokohama, near Tokyo, and became interested in spaceflight as a very young boy. When I was five years old, I saw the, the first man's landing on the moon on TV, and I was impressed at it. That was one thing. And another thing was, uh, I was a fan of a uh, space hero called Ultra 7, which is a Japanese TV program about uh, 40 years ago. I was a big fan of that. That made me interested in space. He planned to go to college to study astronomy or space engineering. But when his uncle spoke to him about how rewarding he found it to be a physician, Furukawa changed his mind. He earned a doctorate of medicine at the University of Tokyo and spent five years working as a surgeon before shifting his focus to medical research. 
One night at work, he saw on television that the Japanese space agency was looking for new astronauts for the International Space Station and decided to try for it. He was picked for the program in 1999 and finished his Ph.D. in medical science from the University of Tokyo the next year. In 2001, he started advanced space station training in Japan. By mid-2004, he'd completed training as a Soyuz flight engineer in Star City and then moved to Houston to train with the 2004 class of NASA astronauts. About 100 years ago, uh, flying was a very dangerous thing. Uh, I think there was a discussion at that point uh, saying that uh, we don't need to fly uh, with the risks of, uh, with such risks. The ground tr transportations are good enough. The widening the activity area to outer space is an instinct for human beings. Human beings like to know the unknowns. Dan Burbank is from central Connecticut, born in Manchester and raised in Tolland. He became interested in space and astronomy and science when the first men landed on the moon just one week before his eighth birthday. But a bigger impression was made a year later when he saw the movie The Boatniks. And it was this silly story about this fellow who graduates from the Coast Guard Academy and goes to a ship and, and has a whole series of misadventures. But from that point on, as long as I can remember, I wanted to be in the Coast Guard. I wanted to do search and rescue. He didn't get into the Coast Guard Academy on his first try, but after two years as a physics major at Fairfield University, he did, and learned almost immediately that Coast Guard officers don't do search and rescue on small boats, as he had dreamed of doing. But helicopter pilots did, and that became his new goal. Burbank graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Engineering and spent a year and a half assigned to a Coast Guard cutter before going to flight school and learning to fly planes and helicopters. After his first tour, he earned a master's in aeronautical science from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University and completed the training to become an engineering officer and did that job while still flying on subsequent assignments. But he was inspired when fellow Coast Guard officer Bruce Melnick became an astronaut and Burbank applied three times before being selected as an astronaut in 1996. He was part of the 2000 shuttle mission that prepared the Zvezda module for the station's first permanent crew performed one spacewalk on the 2006 shuttle mission that delivered the P-3-P-4 truss, and then spent three years teaching at the Coast Guard Academy before retiring as a captain and beginning training for his first long-duration spaceflight, which he likens to the work that drew him to the Coast Guard as a boy. You're not going doing a mission with the idea that you're going to save a life. You're going to do a mission with the idea that you're going to save the future of a species and that this is where humans belong. I think humans, by their very nature, you know, are outward looking and I think it's in our destiny to, to, uh, to leave this planet ultimately and to go other places. Russian Air Force Colonel Anton Shkaplerov was born and raised in Sevastopol, the home of the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet. Though his father worked on a submarine, Shkaplerov became fascinated with spaceflight as a boy and felt that the Air Force was the best path to cosmonaut, so he joined a local aviation club. I started flying planes at 15. At 16, I was flying them on my own. I was flying over my hometown where I was born. Everything was so familiar and uh, pleasant to the eye, so then I realized that after two years of flying, when I was in high school, the choice was right. After high school, Shkaplerov went to the Kaczynsk Air Force Pilot School in Volgograd and graduated as a pilot engineer. He flew MiG-29s while attending the Zhukovsky Air Force Engineering School, then spent six years as a pilot instructor while also flying as a member of the Sky Hussars, a flight demonstration squadron. Shkaplerov was selected as a cosmonaut in 2003. If we do not study the um, space, we will stalemate, um, and we have to move on. We have to study new planets, um, new horizons, new resources, uh, new energy resources, for example. Maybe there is some other types and forms of life uh, on other planets, so why not? 
Anatoly Ivanishin, a lieutenant colonel in Russia's Air Force, is a native of Irkutsk, one of the largest cities in Siberia. He spent a lot of time in various sports and study groups as a boy. And although his mother says he always wanted to be a cosmonaut, Ivanishin remembers wanting to be a fighter pilot. And that's why he joined a skydiving club as a young teenager. At the time, it was the only uh, sky-related activity available for me. Uh, we, we didn't have at the time uh, an opportunity in my city to fly any kind of airplanes. Uh, so I did my first uh, jump uh, when I was 14. He didn't get into military pilot school on his first attempt, so Ivanishin spent a year majoring in aviation design at the Irkutsk Polytechnic Institute before starting his pilot training at the Chernigov Higher Military Aviation School. He graduated in 1991, the same year the Soviet Union collapsed. And although he flew the MiG-29 and Su-27 operationally, he felt he wasn't getting the experience he wanted. So he took classes at Moscow State University in economics, statistics, and information theory. He graduated in 2003 with plans for a career as a software developer, but gave that up when he was selected as a cosmonaut that very same week. Human beings are two curious creatures, and uh, they will not remain for a long time on low Earth orbit. Uh, they will go further and further to the universe, because to go further, we will need uh, new solutions, uh, new materials, new spacecrafts. And uh, the International Space Station we have today is the right place uh, uh, to prove uh, solutions. 